Hello friends and welcome back to Swift Guitar Lessons for another music theory tutorial. In today's session we're going to be talking about the very powerful caged system and how it can be used to create all the different positions, five positions in total, of a given major chord. Now I've got a full PDF study guide to help you with your study. It's complete with different diagrams to make this a little bit easier to learn. Now let's get started with your lesson. Okay, close look at the fretboard, getting started with section one of this lesson. What is the caged system? Well, the caged system derives its name from the five basic open position chord shapes. C, A, G, E, and of course D. Now the basic concept is that any major chord can be performed in five different positions on the fretboard using these five shapes. Now in this lesson, we're going to discover the five different ways of playing the chord C major, which consists of the notes C, E, and G. Okay, right there found uh, on the bass note, the D string, and also the G string inside that basic position of the C chord. Now that's the first, third, and fifth notes of the C major scale. Now before we dive in learning the different positions of this chord, uh, we're going to review those caged shapes in the open position for the beginners out there. Okay, close look at the open position, getting started reviewing those open position chord shapes. The first shape that we're learning is the C shape. My ring finger's on the third fret of the A string, middle finger second fret of the D string, and my index finger is on the first fret of the B string. There are two roots in this chord shape. The C note here on the A string, and the C note found here on the B string, strumming from the A string down. The next chord shape that we have is the A shape. All right, I have the open A string playing the root. Next, I have my middle finger, second fret of the D string, my ring finger playing the second fret of the G string, that's another root, and my pinky is here on the B string, second fret. All right, strumming from the A string to the high E string. Again, remember where those root notes are. The A string and also the G string in this chord. The next shape we have is the G shape. All right, my third finger is on the third fret of the low E string, playing the root. My middle finger is here on the second fret of the A string. And my pinky is here on the high E string, uh, third fret, another root. The G shape. So I have a root on the low E string, root on the open G, and also a root on the high E string. All G notes. Okay, the next shape that we have is the E shape. E major shape. Open E string playing the root. Then my middle finger is on the second fret of the A string. My ring finger is on the second fret of the D string and my index finger is on the first fret of the G string. The E shape. So I have a root on the uh, low E string open, second fret of the D string is also an E note, and also the high E string open. The E shape. Okay, and our final chord shape is the D shape. The open D string is a root, I have the uh, second fret of the G string, my ring finger on another root, which is the third fret of the B string. Okay, so that's also a D note. And my middle finger is on the high E string, uh, second fret. Fingers nice and arched for a nice clear D major chord shape. Okay, so there you have it, the C, the A, the G, the E, and the D. To really understand how the cage system works, you need to think of these things as just being shapes that can be used to create major chords in every single key. Okay, great work everybody. Now we're jumping into section two of this lesson. Now that you've reviewed the basic major shapes in the open position, we can begin to transpose each of them to the key of C. Now to do this, we're gonna to need to move them into a fret position in which their root note would become C. We'll also need to convert them into barred shapes by changing our finger positions, so that way the index finger is freed up to bar across the strings. 
Okay, now jumping into section three, putting everything I just told you to work in finding the five caged positions of the C major triad. For those of you who don't know what that word triad means, it's any three note chord. Now all major chords, which is what we're finding today, uh, consist of the first, third, and fifth notes of their major scale. So we're finding the first, third, and fifth of the C major scale up and down the fretboard. Getting started with your first position, the C position of the C chord. This is the position of C major that everybody knows and loves, one of the first chords that everybody learns. Once again, my ring finger is on the third fret of the A string, middle finger, second fret of the D string, and my index finger is on the first fret of the B string. Strumming from the A string down, the C position of the C major chord. Now jumping into the A shape of the C major chord. I simply take the A chord, bring it up to the key of C, right there on the fifth fret, and then bar. So I'm barring from the A string to the high E string, then I'm just setting up my A chord shape to create my C major bar chord. This is one of the very first bar chord positions that people usually learn. An alternative way of playing it is to use the ring finger to bar across the D, G, and B string. Most of you won't be able to access the high E string after that, but that's quite okay. Okay, jumping into our next shape, the G position of the C major chord. Remember our process. Take the G chord and then move it into a fretted position in which its root note is no longer G, but rather becomes C. So the C note is found on the eighth fret of the low E string. So just move that ring finger right to the eighth fret. Now we're playing the G position of the C major chord. I got a bar the fifth fret. And I have this C major chord shape here, okay? Now this isn't a very common bar chord position, but it's still very, very good to know because there is scale positions that wrap around that chord shape. The G position of the C major chord. Okay, now jumping into our next position, the E position of the C major chord. I'm gonna take my E chord and bring it up to the key of C. So I can actually take the whole chord and just go fret by fret to figure this out. E major, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, B flat, B, C. Now I need to free up my index finger by changing my finger positions and bar the eighth fret for the E position of the C major chord. So my index finger is barring from E to E on the eighth fret. Then I'm gonna set up my E shape. Ring finger on the 10th fret of the A string, the pinky beneath that D string 10th fret, and the middle finger playing the ninth fret of that G string. Okay, so now you can see the root note of this E shape is now C, making this the E position of the C major chord. Okay, great work everybody. So far you have the C, the A, the G, and the E positions of your C major chord. Now we're jumping into your final position that you gotta learn, the D position. Taking my D major chord, okay, here it is with my finger positions already appropriate, ready to bar, and I'm just taking it up to the key of C. D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, B flat, B, C. So it's simply just taking your D chord and putting it right on the double dots, changing your finger positions up, and then using your index finger to grab the 10th fret of the D string. All right, a very useful shape that most of the time people will just play their regular D shape, usually picking that apart to create a lead line. Okay, so here we have it, the last shape that you needed to learn, the last position of the C chord. Here it is in D position. Okay, great work everybody. Now you're able to find the C major chord up and down the fretboard in the five different caged positions. That's excellent. 
Now, section four of this lesson is basically just my departing words of advice. In order to really achieve an understanding of the guitar, uh, especially the cage system, it's absolutely necessary that you have the notes on the fretboard memorized. This is a very easy thing to do over the course of a few weeks, and it's very sad because a lot of guitar players put it off, but it's the one thing that probably above all else will help you understand the guitar and improve your playing. So the final diagram featured in my PDF study guide at patreon.com slash lessons is going to show you all those positions once again, but this time is gonna tell you the notes that you're playing. Now remember, inside of a C major chord, and actually all major chords, you're just playing the first, the third, and the fifth note of its major scale. That means all you're gonna find, no matter which position you're playing in, are C's, E's, and G's the first, third, and fifth note of the C major scale. So I want you to study that, really dedicate yourself to learning the notes on the fretboard. A couple of tips in doing that would be first to learn the names of the notes on the E string and the A string. That way you'll always be able to tell what key you're playing a bar chord in or a scale. Now, the next thing that I would suggest that you do to memorize all the notes on the fretboard is to learn all of the notes on all six strings in the first three frets, that open position. That way, you know what notes you're playing when you're jamming through your basic open position chords. Now, the last thing that I suggest you do to fill in the rest of the gaps is to always be thinking about the note names whenever you're learning something new. So, you're tackling a new technique, maybe the uh, C major scale. Instead of saying to yourself, okay, the eighth fret, the tenth fret, the seventh fret, the eighth fret, so on and so forth, say the names of the notes. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now I realize at first you might need the fret names, or the fret number names, but once you have it down, always be thinking in terms of the note names and also what scale intervals you're playing. Those are just a few tips to being able to really understand the fretboard and memorize the notes. All right, everyone, thanks so much for checking out this lesson on the cage system. I hope you found it useful and informative. Now that you're able to find the C major chord shape up and down the fretboard, I recommend that you try to apply that system and that knowledge to some of your other open position chord shapes. Now, this is going to open the floodgates. There's so many things that are related to the cage system. For example, how to use a capo to change the position of a given chord progression, or how to find different scale patterns that wrap around those caged positions. I want to thank my patients for making this lesson possible. I hope you're enjoying the extra resources, including the PDF study guide for this lesson. I got many more videos coming up, so keep checking back. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.